Okay, so I'm going to assume that you've read the explain part. And we're going to just jump into questions number one and two on page 10. Um, we're asked to choose the graph that matches the situation. Number one, the cook put broth and vegetables into the pot. Later, he added some meat. He let it cook for a while and then served it to diners one dish at a time. So let's take a look at um, graph A, B, and C here. Uh, and let me zoom in, actually. So we're told that the cook put um, broth and vegetables into a pot. So we're comparing two things here, actually. Time and the level or the amount of water in the pot, actually. So we can see here in this in this really beginning part that it's going quite steeply. And I think that's the part, uh, if, I, if I can imagine this, is, this is the part where the cook's putting broth and vegetables into the pot. And then here is where we add the meat. And then here, this makes sense. He's serving it to diners one at a time, therefore it's going, the level in the pot is going down a certain amount each time, like a step almost, because it's bowls here. So I think it's gonna be graph A, but let's take a look at graph B and C just to compare. Now if we take a look at graphs B and C, uh, I don't see that kind of um, accuracy and description, right? There's supposed to be a part where the cook puts broth and vegetables into the pot and after you don't do that, it should, I mean, the level should level out. And there's no, there's no part in graph B where it levels out and definitely there's no part in this where um, he's serving it to diners one dish at a time. Yeah, it looks like, in fact, that the level in the pot's going up. And here, in graph C, um, there's no part about this where uh, the cook's putting broth and vegetables into the pot and then it leveling out before he adds some meat. So it's definitely not C either, so we're going to say graph A. Let's take a look at graph B, or sorry, question number two. Uh, bus begins its route and begin and increases at a constant speed and cruises at 25 miles per hour. It slows down and stops to pick up riders. So there's multiple parts to this. The, so let's see, the bus begins its route and increases at a constant speed. So it's increasing at a constant speed and cruising at 25 miles per hour. Okay, so that's part one. Maybe I should have done that for the first question. And then it slows down and stops. It slows down and then it stops. So I'm going to label these two and three because there's, so far there's two parts to this question. Slowing down and stopping to pick up riders. And the bus picks up riders at two stops. So there's going to be, so this is going to happen at least twice, right? Or at least uh, the stops are going to happen at least two or three times. So let's take a look at graph A. And again, they're comparing speed and time. So this kind of makes sense, right? They're um, increasing at a constant speed and then slowing down and then stopping to pick up riders, right? When you stop, um, your speed is not increasing. Or hold on, no, 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 no. Let me take that back. So you're cruising, right, at 25 miles per hour. That makes sense given that this is at 25. And then here we're stopping, right? Uh, and at a certain point, you're going to be at zero miles per hour because you have to stop to pick up uh, riders. You're not, you know, you're not asking to run and jump on. Picking up speed, you're cruising, you're slowing down, you're stopping again, right? So I think it's going to be graph A, and then, um, yeah. So graph A looks pretty good. Graph B does as well, except the only difference is there's no cruising part. Um, there's a part where he he moves up to 25 miles per hour and then after he kind of hits the apex of 25 miles per hour he starts immediately slowing down b is not a bad option but i think a is just a little bit more accurate um and c is not right at all right this one the bus is just going at starting off at 25 miles per hour and never even stopping so unless you're um yeah unless you're uh Usain Bolt. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think you're going to catch that bus. So the correct graph here, or the correct choice here, is A. Okay. Moving on to explain 2. Uh, let's see here. There's nothing to ask there, so we're going to move on to page, uh, page 12 here. We're told um, Gabe works for a packing company for a wage of $15. 
per hour, he can work a maximum of five hours. So um, you should have read in Explain 2 about the differences between continuous and discrete graphs. I'm going to assume that you've already read it. Um, but we are told that this graph is continuous because Gabe is not limited to working whole hours. He can work half an hour. He can work maybe a quarter of an hour, maybe. Um, and they will adjust his pay accordingly based on that. So um, let me see. They've already done question one for us. So let's move on to question two. So here we go. A local salesman is going door to door trying to sell vacuums. For every local vacuum he sells, he makes $20. He can sell a maximum of 10 vacuums a day. So first of all, we have to answer or we have to be able to tell whether or not this is continuous or discrete. And the answer to this is that it's um, that it's discrete because you can't sell uh, fractional parts of a vacuum. You can't sell two and a half vacuums. So we're going to say this is a discrete graph. And let's see, let's go ahead and graph this. So he's going door to door, door, door. and so for each one he sells so after one, um, after he sells one vacuum, he's going to make twenty dollars. And I know this is twenty because it's halfway between zero and forty. Okay, he can sell a maximum of ten vacuums a day. So uh, there's that first one, and then um, at two vacuums, right? Now we we're going to add to that twenty dollars he made, and he's at forty dollars now. And I hope you can sense a pattern here. So, if he can sell a maximum of 10 vacuums a day, the maximum amount of money he can make a day is $200. And we're not going to actually connect um, these dots because they are a, this is a discrete graph. So, um, we're going to end it there. So, we're, we don't have to connect the, the lines for that. Take a look at question number three. Lastly, um, Fred has a beautiful flower garden and lawn. He waters his lawn at a rate of three gallons per minute. Um, let's see. So we're comparing gallons to minutes. So let me let me actually grab this first. So um, after every minute, it's going to increase at three gallons. So after one minute, we're at three gallons. After two minutes, we're at six gallons. Um, so on and so forth. Multiples of three, it looks like. So if we go ahead and graph all this, this is what it's going to look like. And of course, when the water comes out of the hose, it doesn't come out in in blocks after every minute. It's just going to continually come out. So this is a continuous graph. And because it's a continuous graph, I'm going to draw a line from 0 all the way to the tippy point there. So that should be, uh, or that's what our graph should look like. One continuous line, not a discrete point, set of points.